Okay, so we're going to start with the one that Zach did get to, which is The Piano Lesson. Just came out on Netflix this weekend. The latest August Wilson adaptation uh, to hit Netflix and uh, involve a lot of family members of Denzel Washington. Uh, let's see here. Who's going to start on this one? Todd. Zach start. He's oh, yeah. Bored. Zach has to start because he's not going to start on anything else. So, Zach, start on the piano lesson. Okay, the piano lesson is the latest film from, well, the, I guess the 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 first film I believe from Malcolm Washington, uh, first feature film, son of Denzel Washington, and uh, it is an adaptation of the August Wilson play written in 1987. Um, the piano lesson has been filmed a few times before. One was a, a made-for-TV movie in 1995 with Charles S. S. Dutton, which I've seen parts of, and I actually went back and watched it. It's free on YouTube. It's an interesting kind of contrast. It's a very, I almost compare it to like watching it, you know, like it today versus the Tim Curry it, which was made for TV. There's like a little bit of parallels there, but it's an interesting kind of com comparison. Anyway, the piano lesson tells the story of um, a family uh, in mostly in Pittsburgh in 1936, although it's also a family reunion story um, in the movie. Uh, we have two characters, uh, Boy Willie, uh, played by John David Washington, and his friend Lyman, played by Ray Fisher. And they're from they're share sharecroppers from Mississippi, and they've gone up to Pittsburgh uh, to see Boy Willie's sister, uh, Daniel Deadweiler, who in the movie she plays a character named Bernice, who lives with her uncle Doker, played by Samuel L. Jackson. By the way, was Denzel Washington supposed to play the Samuel L. Jackson role? And maybe he was just making Gladiator 2. It's the, to me, it's kind of baffling that Denzel wasn't doker in the movie and and it almost distracted did you guys have that thought like i mean samuel jackson's fine in the movie but it made me kind of think like this must have been a role for denzel right so actually uh samuel jackson john david washington ray fisher and michael potts are all reprising their role after playing it on broadway oh okay well there we go Ans answered my question um, anyway, uh, so this is a movie that is, um, yes, it's about a family reunion, but it's also about a family dispute of sorts because there is a family heirloom uh, that is a piano that has a great significance for this, uh, this family. Um, Danielle Deadweiler is in possession of the piano, uh, which has been passed along from her father, uh, who basically was part of a plan to uh, take it from the um, you know, really terrible uh, plantation owner, um, the, the uh, slave owning family that that uh, had pos had possession of it for for years. Um, and now uh, the John David Washington character wants to kind of claim his piece of it so he can actually buy a portion of the land that is from that same family. Um, and there's, you know, there's some mysticism in the movie. There's a, a spirit, some sort of apparition that kind of haunts the piano. And the, and the Daniel Deadweiler character has sort of visions um, of this guy who, who might have been murdered. Um, and then, you know, along the way, we have a few kind of peripheral members of the family uh, or, or friends that have also kind of moved in this, um, uh, uh, you know, black urban migration to Pittsburgh. Uh, and uh, we get kind of this exploration about, um, you know, city versus country a little bit, north versus south, but also this family that uh, at the core, at the center of it kind of has differing views about the role of, of um, the, the legacy of slavery um, and what this piano really means to them. Um, John David Washington sort of think, thinks of it as just a, a, a piece of um, something that he can sell, whereas Daniel Deadweiler sees it as something more significant. This is a really interesting movie. Uh, I was not really familiar with, with the play uh, that much. Um, it's a dense movie. Uh, it, there's, a, there's a lot of dialogue in it. It does feel very stage bound. Um, and it's a little bit hard to process exactly what's happening. There's a few key flashbacks in the movie that help explain things, but there's also characters that are referred to off stage, and we never really know uh, who they are. Um, you know, in a way, it reminded me kind of of like James Joyce a little bit in the fact that it's so that the language is very colloquial in it, and you almost have to watch it with subtitles. Uh, the actors, I think, do a really great job with the language. Um, but it's it's dense, you know, it's a very dense text. And I believe the play was even longer. The play is, I, think, I believe, three hours long. And so this is this is an abridged version. This movie does feel long at times. It feels a little dry. It feels somewhat academic. Um, and yet it's really interesting in the way that it shows these characters with, with again, differing views, differing attitudes about uh, what's important to them and their family. Um, 
you know, the movie is a little meandering at times, and I wish it had been, had been cut down. I think the best elements of the movie are John David Washington and Danielle Deadweiler. They have some really, they, they have a really kind of fierce chemistry together. And uh, I think when they're on screen together, the movie really, really works well. Um, the peripheral characters, again, it kind of feels like the movie just sees them as sort of interstitial in a way. And it kind of distracts, I think, from the, from the main uh, strength of the movie. Um, is it a fun movie to watch? I don't know if I would necessarily run to watch it again. I think it's an ambitious project and I applaud the filmmakers for, for doing a, a good job on it. Um, I don't think it's quite to the level of Fences because Fences had those incredible performances by Denzel Washington and, uh, um, in the Academy Award, um, winning performance by Viola Davis and those characters that 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 movie was really centered around those two characters and that marriage that was really fractured and complex this movie I think is is dense in the way that it's not just looking at relationships but again the legacy of slavery black modernity um and this kind of this era that they're living in which is really complex I'm giving this three stars knowing that it's not necessarily a fun movie but it's a fascinating movie and i applaud its existence because i think it makes audiences it's going to make audiences want to study the work of august wilson more i think this is actually a little bit of improvement over mob rainey's black bottom which also i think had similar kind of pacing issues and also felt stage bound but this movie i think because of the performances and because of the really nice relationship between the two leads um it it, it worked for me so i i like it three stars all right todd where are you at uh well i i do like the the cast and how they do feel like a family but the problem is they kind of feel like august osage county or something like that when like how they fight uh it's i mean it, it's just a little off-putting but and i also think the movie's a little unfocused like the, the first like half hour i can't really tell you the significance of it but it kind of like meanders its way before it actually gets to what, what the movie's going to be about it was um a little confusing but um JD Dubs, um, he does way too much in this. Like he, every other actor feels natural, but he acts like he's in a play. Like I mean, he doesn't talk like a person. He's trying to entertain, which is surprising because in, in in like in Malcolm and Marie, it was another very uh, like limited setting movie. He was uh, more believable and subtle, but here he's like shouting to the balcony on in every line, and. Um, but once the movie settles down, it, it's pretty watchable. Uh, Daniel Deadweiler has a few scenes of she puts her stamp on an Oscar nomination. Whining Boy, but the Michael Potts character, I think that was my favorite character. He's like sort of the comedic timing. And we all kind of know a guy like that who just is like shows up for no reason, uninvited and just like hangs out. Because that, that's the way what the even though he's like the brother of of a uh, Doker, I, I, I still feel like he was just like the guy who just like come the, the village got the guy in the village who just like comes in and out. But the movie has its ups and downs. Like, uh, I, I think the director is held back by the source material because he tries to make it cinematic. And like Zach was talking about the 95 version, I haven't seen it, but it's a half an hour shorter. I imagine that means it's probably uh, more faithful to the play and has less unnecessary fat added onto the script because you can probably see which parts in this are not in the play. But um, I don't know. The last few scenes also are, are they're pretty out there. Like I kind of get it, but I don't think they're really earned. I, I was reminded about the end of the whale when I was watching the, the last couple of scenes and I was just like, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm at two stars. Whoa. Ouch. All right. So we've got three stars from Zach, two stars from Todd. I two and a half. Terry. I'm, I'm, I mean, I have it at three, but I I, I agree kind of with both of you at times. So I'm tempted to dump to drop it down to two and a half. Uh, I think I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to go two and a half. I it is watchable. It is interesting. It is very talky and feels like it feels stage bound in a way that is distracting. Like some some movies can make it work. This one feels stuck. Uh, John David Washington. I mean, can we nominate him now for the Matt Damon award? Cause he's in a different movie than everybody else in this. Uh, everyone is so natural. Like Samuel Jackson gives such a subtle performance that I didn't, you know, you forget that he has that gear in him, but then you have John David Washington who, I mean, he, he's basically trying to, re-win Denzel's Oscar for training day in this movie. 
Um, I, I don't know. It's weird. It, he, no, he's, he's just he's shouting at the balcony the entire time. Like he thinks yeah. he's on stage. That's it, it, that, that, it, it does kind of feel like he he's he's uh, he's feeling the stage of it. It is interesting, but like, but again, it's it it's a slice of life that I then you go supernatural at times. I I don't know it. It it was a, an interesting watch, but I had too many hiccups with it. I'd say it's the worst of the three between Fences, Ma Rainey, and and this. Uh, I I I go Fences one, Ma Rainey two. I think Ma Rainey had more interesting characters. Uh, it it also felt very stage bound, but all the characters were fascinating to to hear about and and live with. This one, I mean, the most interesting character was the piano itself, and um, yeah. So yeah, I think I'll go two and a half stars. I'll I'll, I'll split the difference between the two of you because I kind of agree with both of you. Well, I, I don't entirely, I'm, I'm sympathetic to what both you guys are saying. And would it be the first thing that I turn on again? Probably not. But I'm at three stars really for, it, I'm a little over you guys for, for two reasons. One is that um, I think that the movie makes, at least it made me want to look more at August Wilson as a playwright. You know, it, it piqued my interest in the time period and the, the writer, the author, um, and I think it's, a, it's existence is justified just on that behalf because August Wilson was one of the great playwrights of all time, uh, certainly in the 20th century. The other reason I think is a little bit more complex to articulate, which is that this is, this is looking at a time and place in, in America that it is not readily looked at. There's not a lot of movies about African American, uh, urban African American culture in the 1930s that I, I can think of off the top of my head. And I think it's a, it's an interesting, uh, portrait of, of life. And I think the move that the play was meant to capture how attitudes shift over time. Uh, and, you know, the movie doesn't, I don't think it captured it perfectly. I agree. It's a little bit uh, uh, all over the place. I don't know exactly what the last 20 minutes were. It was entertaining though. I mean, it was, I thought actually cinematically, I thought the director did a lot, a lot of cool stuff in the last 20 minutes, but uh, I, it, again, I, it's, it's existence to me was justified just on the basis of how interesting it was to watch, even if I didn't fully comprehend all of it or couldn't have really possibly comprehended all of it. But uh, I, I appreciate it for what it was. I do love that we keep making these these August Wilson adaptations like he's got some fascinating material that always seems to be slice of life out of Pittsburgh, which is is such a like you said, it's such a time period and a and a spot and a and a culture that we don't see portrayed on screen. And for that, you got to give a kudos. But at the same time, you'd like it done a little better <laughs> well if okay so let's say let's say uh jdw is not the star of this movie let's say it's it's someone else who's a little bit lo more low-key is that really what you guys are are harping on because i get it he brings a lot well, of energy it was like he's stanfield or something yeah, yeah i mean yeah, that, that would make it a, a whole lot more palatable or kaluuya yeah yeah i don't think that's enough to dock the movie though i think that was his interpretation of it and he's a real he's one of the real reasons this, i mean he, either he's in the movie you know, because he's instrumental in getting this movie made or he's not. And I actually think he's pretty good in the movie. Now, I agree. It's 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 a bit uh, uh, over the top at times. But I think that's who the character is. And there were also times that Denzel went over the top uh, as Troy in Fences. I mean, that's kind of who the, I kind of thought he was almost modeling the character after Denzel's performance a little bit in Fences. There are times when those characters have a little bit of intersecting, overlapping egos. Um, but, uh, I appreciate JDW for what he is. I think he's a talented actor in a way. Actually, it's kind of funny. Um, did you guys watch the, the, uh, the special that Netflix made, um, uh, that, that had the actors and Denzel on it. It's called, uh, a, a legacy and, and a vision. It also helped confirm that I was at three stars for the movie. Actually, it's kind of a funny special because they really just kind of summarize the movie. And there's again, a lot to the plot that I missed as I was watching the movie. So I appreciated having that little afterward conversation about it but uh, i'd recommend watching that as a as a side piece to uh watching this movie that's because wikipedia doesn't have a plot on on their page right 
Well, I, there, uh, yeah, you know, I was reminded of watching Tenet with JDW, which I also watched with Wikipedia. Wikipedia might be a little helpful at times with this movie, but uh, the round table helps too. It's it's too long. Like, how many times do you have to have the exact same conversation come up? I, it's a little, and, le- it's a little lengthy. I, I agree. Yeah, could, could have trimmed it a little. Bit. I, I I I respect your uh, your three stars out of respect, though. That's kind of where I was at, but then I realized after the, listening to the two of you talk, I agreed more with Todd than you. So no, it's not out of respect. Out of respect means that I don't necessarily. I I have admiration for the movie, and I think it's a good it's a good enough movie. I just don't know if I'd want to watch it again. It wouldn't be my number one choice. If I'm going to watch it, a three star movie again, I would choose like Strange Darling or something like that. I, I wouldn't rewatch this one right away. I would. I would right. before rewatching this one, I would re I would read an August Wilson play. How about that? That's fair. I'd probably be in the same boat. All right. Well, three stars from Zach, two and a half from me, two stars from Todd. This is on Netflix. It is an awards contender. Like we we could see several different awards coming out of this. Um, is this when Daniel Deadweiler finally gets her Oscar after getting snubbed a couple years ago? I hope so. Um, just simply because she was snubbed a couple years ago. And, and she's, she's a nom- good. nomination yeah. guaranteed. Good I, uh, I don't know about she's going to win like that, but. I don't think any categories wrapped up. So, yeah, very good. All right. 